back by a McNeil in Tokyo. Thanks so much for joining again, Baye. You're welcome, JJ. Thanks for having me. So it's pretty crazy. I was uh, re reviewing our first talk last year. It was June of last year. It was. So almost a year. And it really seems like a lot has happened in the world since then, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, the world has changed completely. <laughs> It's a whole other planet now, for real. Yeah. So uh, first to introduce you to the audience, you gave a really great intro last time. Uh, let's see if I can read this on screen. So born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, a journalist, author, and lecturer. Upon arriving in Japan in 2004, McNeil began teaching and later began his blog, Local in Yokohama which covered life in Japan from a Black New Yorker's perspective in 2014. Baye was hired as a columnist for the Japan Times. His column, Black Eye, raises awareness of Black people and activities in the profile and perception of Blackness in Japan. It's nice to do a proper profile intro. Anything to add? Anything missing? Um... New homeowner? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that first, because that's a really recent, exciting. We mentioned that you had just bought the land last year. That's right. I just bought the land, and we moved in January 8th. So we've been living here. Wow. You got pictures. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we moved in January 8th. And um, so that makes it four months in three days. And... Uh, Mickey, that's my wife, DIY. You got pictures of my wife. And um, she's a DIY queen, and she's been doing so many amazing things in this house. I'm just along for the ride and paying the bills. <laughs> amazing. Because but, uh, <clears throat> remodeling old homes is something we talk about a lot in this series. It's a very popular topic. But you actually built a new home, but she's still doing DIY projects like the fence there. She's very impressive. She is very impressive. I'm I really lucked up. Hey, Clinton, how you doing, man? So yeah, yeah, I really lucked up. She's she's uh she's doing amazing stuff right now. She's ah uh, yeah. What what you see in the pictures there? She's going to be building our fencing. Yeah, she's doing the fencing, and I I can't wait to see what it looks like. I can't imagine. <laughs> That's awesome. It's great to have at least one person in the in the family who can do DIY stuff. It's always handy. Yeah. It's like now, it's like I'm married to the super. <laughs> hey, if something breaks, you know who who you're gonna ask to fix it. It's awesome. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> yeah. um, <Let's>, next, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last time we were introducing your book. Hello, hi, my name is Loco and I'm a racist, and you have some exciting news. You've been in the studio. I have been in the studio, yes. We, um, I'm in the process of producing an audiobook version of uh, How My Name is Loco and I'm a Racist. So I'm very excited about that. It's coming together very nicely. And I've also been recording some, some extras for the audiobook with uh, people who were in the book, characters from the book, characters. These are real people, but I'm calling them characters. But there are people who were in the book who agreed to to come in and kind of talk about some of the things that were discussed in the book, you know, in relation to their, you know, the, the chapters that they appeared in. So I'm very excited about that. I've already, I've already done three of these records. I have two more lined up, so it's coming together nicely. Also, the Japanese version of Hi, My Name is yes. Loco, and I'm a Racist is coming out this fall, and that's still... That, that's being translated as we speak by a, a Japanese translator. And I'm um, very excited about that as well. So, yeah, those are two the two big major projects in addition to the home uh, for this year. So that's, that's awesome. been keeping me busy. Yeah, congratulations. That's Thank a great much. progress on an already successful, very popular book, but this is the the next level, leveling up. And yes. I, I love I love how in this picture where you're smiling right next to me and you're saying, 
it was funnier than you remembered that you guys were cracking up and so it took you longer to record it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a different experience. It's a different experience when you're writing the work, when you're reading the work and when you're reading the work aloud. This is something I, 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 I most of these chapters, I mean, of course, when I do readings, I've read aloud certain chapters. I usually read the same chapter over and over because I got it, you know, worked out to a certain rhythm and stuff. But some of this stuff I've never read aloud. So, yeah, it's it was really, uh, you know, it's like it's like rediscovering my own work. <laughs> Can so you give us cool. a hint about which part was cracking you up? Um. Well, it was the chapter with uh, the the Kiwi, the Aussie, and uh, colored guy, and uh, that's chapter two. So yeah, just reading that just cracked me up. <laughs> it, really. it, it reminded it reminded me of my early twenties when I first came to Japan. That part and how you guys were all sharing the same flat and all the nonsense you were up to, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of nonsense up in there. <laughs> So is it completely autobiographical or is it fiction? Where? Which book? The the first book that you're doing the audio. Uh, actually, it? I haven't written any fiction books yet. It's all nonfiction. Yeah. Yeah, pretty wild. And it's a, for people who don't know uh, this book yet, this covers uh, your time a bit in America before coming to Japan as well as uh like your first years in Japan yes. and and some of the racial inequality um, issues that you then have written about in Japan Times and other articles and columns and appearances, right? Exactly. Yeah. I've written, I wrote, there was uh, chapters on some of my experiences in the university. What is this? Is this spam? I think, I think that's spam. I'm going to mute. Okay. All right. So hopefully they'll go away. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Go ahead. Um, there was uh, there's chapters on um, some of my experiences growing up in the school I went to when I was a child. My elementary school it was a, a private school. There's chapters on um, my experiences with the five percent. Um, there's a chapter on my experiences in the military and also dating my first interracial relationship. So yeah, there's um, a lot of stuff dealing with the US as well. So may, I would say maybe 50% of the book is in the US and 50% is takes place here in, in Japan. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of your recent articles that have come out. Uh, you had an a article in, only in Japanese, I believe, with Toyo Keizai, is that right? Several. I, I'm a regular contributor there for the last couple of years. So, yeah, I got a lot of articles in Japanese there. If, if anyone know. reads Japanese, please, you know, look uh, for Bae McNeil on Toyo Keiza. I got about a good 15, 20 articles there. So check them out yeah, on, I, on a number of a range of topics. Uh, I, I read the one about labels. Right. And be careful when you're you and maybe think more carefully when using labels. Um, can you like give us a summary of that? Um, essentially, what I was saying. What is this? I'm trying to ignore yeah. it, but it keeps popping up in my face. I know. I'm trying to mute it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, essentially, what it was about was um, um, there's a tendency in Japan to, and not just Japan, in in many different countries, but there's a tendency. There's a tendency to 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 place labels on things um, to, in order to simplify things that shouldn't be simplified, like um, people. Um, for example, you know, um, there's people from from African, various African countries, people from all over the world of African descent, but to label them all, to 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 to, to place them all under this label of coco gene. In itself is problematic, but then there's certain um, certain characteristics that are attached to that label that people will attach to anyone they that they attach that label to. That makes it you know that exacerbates the problematic aspects of labeling. 
So that's what the article was about, how that could be problematic. Not that it necessarily is going to stop overnight, but it should be something that people think about before they do. Think about how, you know, the kind of ramifications um, that could have on the society and how that can lead to um, um, stereotyping and discrimination, segregation, that kind of thing. That's what it was about, though. Just to, just to, just to, something to encourage people to think about what they're doing before they do. Because I don't think there's much thought that goes into it. I think that um, here we're talking, we're talking about Japan. So I think here, I think um, there's, there's, it's being done without any malintent. You know, it's just like, oh, this is you're black. You know, it's just that simple. But it's not that simple. And the fact that you think it's that simple is problematic. Right. Yeah. Um, there was a part in the article where you're you're recounting uh, kind of when you blew up um, working at a school and is, uh, you were being referred to as the black guy or the foreigner. And you, and you said, hey, you know, that's not OK. And uh, they said, what should we call you? <laughs> and, and you said, how about my name? Yeah, let's let's try let's try that on for size, and then you know we can work from there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, because there's so I think there's there's you know, and it's not just Japan, of course. I hate I always try to put that disclaimer in because people feel like you know I'm unfairly targeting Japan, but there is a tendency to not even be able to think outside of the label, you know, and if, when they when they think when 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 a, when they're interacting with non-Japanese, you know, they're always trying to find a label. What label do I attach to this person? You know, Hafu or Gaijin or Kokujin. Or, they're trying to find which label is suitable for this person. Well, he has brown skin, so let's use Kokujin. Oh, he has white skin, so let's use Gaijin. Oh, he looks kind of Japanese, let's call him Hafu. So they're trying to find a label that fits you, and then they can attach all of, all the information they have about that label to you, and then they can work with you with this 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 shorthand, this this kind of social shorthand that they're working with, and it's so problematic. And I just think it needed to be addressed. You know, not that I think it's necessarily racist, but it could lead to some really racist behavior if not checked. Yeah, no, really important to think about. And uh, the last time we were talking about your uh, interaction with NHK and um, how. You didn't see any blackface happening after 2018, so you felt like there was some progress. And I saw in um, Japan Times, you also had an article talking about uh, Martin Luther King, and you felt that there was a sense of progress, maybe because of the Black Lives Movement and there was some momentum there. Are you still feeling that way? How are you feeling now? Um. <laughs> There, there has been some progress. Yeah, definitely some progress. I mean, in particular, after the situation that occurred with NHK, with the uh, that very uh, problematic artwork, uh, that that anime segment that to explain BLM that didn't have any um, mention of the fact that this police officer had killed this black man. So that um, after that. I think that that at least woke up NHK, which is kind of they're 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 really kind of a leader in media here. You know, I think that maybe other stations will follow that lead, hopefully. Um, and what they've done since then is had various programs dealing with, like for example, they had one of the founders of Black Lives Matters on there, on on, uh, on a program on NHK, as well as um, a program that was dedicated to some of the. Um, bullying and other problems that biracial Japanese experience here and this kind of thing. So they, they, they've, they've taken to addressing social issues and that's progress. That's progress. And um, I don't know that how much it's going to continue, but if I have any say in it, it's going, <laughs> it's going to keep going indefinitely. You know, I mean, when I went and did a presentation there to tell them how they could uh, improve one of the things I mentioned was that they need to have something ongoing. You know, they can't they can't you know do a one off and think that's gonna you know um, appease us. You know, I think that if you don't keep it going, 
it's going to, you know, the same problems are going to resurface because that's how that's been the, the trend so far. I mean, for example, you, if you look back in the 80s, you had people protesting against some of the racialized behavior in the media here, even back then, you know, I mean, for example, um, um, there was certain, I'm trying to remember the name of the, the brand, you know, the, um, what's the, that, that soft drink, the white soft drink? Calpis? Calpis, right. Their original branding was this blackface character. This is back in the 80s. And there was a major protest here to get that removed. So ever since then, they've known that blackface has been problematic to the point where they rebranded Calpisa. Now, here we are dealing with blackface again, you know, 20, 30 years later, 40 years later. So if you don't keep it going, people are going to forget and then it's going to resurface and we'll be doing the same nonsense, you know, addressing the same nonsense again 10, 15 years from now, if I'm still around, <laughs> you know, or the next generation of people come into Japan saying, hey, what's this blackface business? I'm like, oh, yeah, we talked about that 20 years ago, you know, so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they need to, you know, keep it, keep it going so that, you know, the next generation of producers don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel. They can just, uh, you know, learn from the, what the previous generation is, is learning now. Yeah. Uh, in the in the last talk, you were, it was just the Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter movement and uh, demonstrations were just starting to happen in Japan. And you actually said in our last talk that, that you felt quite giddy and excited about uh, how things were, were changing and progress moving forward. Uh, since then, uh, Naomi Osaka has had a lot of influence. And I know you've written about Naomi Osaka in an op-ed on Washington Post, and as well as about Naomi in uh, Japan Times. She, she has such a public uh, stage. And uh, so can you talk about her a little bit and how you think she might have help well, move things forward? Because I, I I was really admiring her courage and what she was doing. She is, uh, she's remarkable. She's incredible. I mean, I think what she's done is, is very, uh, is admirable, you know, and inspirational too, because I think many many of the younger people are watching what she's doing, how, how courageous she is to take on these, these corporations and, you know, the, the naysayers and people, negative people who are telling her, oh, you're an athlete, shut up and play tennis. We don't want to hear your ideas about how the world should be. Just play tennis and win and make us look good. And she's like, no, that's not enough. You know, I, I'll do my part, but Japan has to do its part. So she's taking a leadership role in these types of things. And that's, I, I can't say enough about it. She's great. She's really great. Um, and, and I think, She's inspiring people because, you know, people are like, oh, wow, you know, why? Well, well, first of all, and, and this goes back to people like Ariana Miyamoto, who um, was Miss Universe Japan back in 2015. And when she emerged on the scene, there was talk about, you know, how can a, a black woman represent Japan? you know, on the world stage? Because that's where she's going. After she won Miss Universe Japan, she was going to enter the 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 global competition. So she would be basically a black woman representing Japan. But Naomi, the next level of that, you know, <laughs> she's, you know, she's, she's, she's representing Japan, not only in the world of tennis, but now soon in the Olympic world. So it's, it's going to, uh, Japan has to acknowledge and embrace the fact that as much as they want to hold on to this this idea of their of this country being homogenous and and um, isolated from the world and you know this type of thing where there's all these built-in excuses for their lagging behind in certain areas, that's all that's all null and void now. You know, you got a black woman representing your country who's telling you, you know, who's leading you in the right direction. You just follow her. You know, see where it goes. If you don't like where she takes you, then you can, you know, you know, go back if you want to. But for the for the time being, follow her lead because she's going in the right direction. She's leading you in the direction of recognizing the diversity that's already here. You know, she's leading you in the direction of in a direction that's going to make the rest of the world really embrace Japan as this 
you know, not this uh, um, sleeping kind of backward, you know, just ignorant prone country of uh, faux, faux pas prone country, you know, racist faux pas prone country to a country that's cognizant, that's, that's, that recognizes that um, it has a lot to learn and is, you know, ready to learn, you know, ready to, ready to, 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 to uh, take on the challenges that are, that is going to be facing in the years to come. And my, Naomi is right there in the, in the lead on that. I love her. <laughs> yeah, I think she's, that. Uh, she's awesome. And she's, she's awesome. Yeah. She, she represents Japan. She represents America. She represents Black people, you know, Japanese people. It's, you know, lots of respect. Awesome. Yeah, we are having spam problems. If anybody from HAPS would like to step in and block these people, I'm trying. Uh, please block them permanently. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, you also had another example, another athlete um, that you were talking about that you didn't realize that he was also getting racist comments and I, I wonder how you can use your position and your connection to media in Japan um, to help people like him. He doesn't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> he does not need any help. That man is, come on. No, he doesn't need any help. He's a superstar. Japan needs help, not him. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it reminded me of, you also were commenting on uh, Japan and the IOC has said no protesting at the Olympics. Yeah, I I, I mean, I, I expect, I imagine, I don't know all the, 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 the Olympic rules and whatnot, but I expect that they say that every time. It's not, this can't be nothing new. But you know, people are gonna protest, so they're just saying it. They're just saying it to be saying it. I don't think this is a new rule, is it? Um, I I, I would I, imagine they've been afraid to to for the politiz politicization of the Olympics is always gonna be problematic. Yeah. So um, I, I can't imagine this is a new rule. But um, I think that. You know, people are going to continue just like the Oscars. Nobody wants to buy a, get an Oscar and start talking about their politics, but people do it, and people are going to do it in the Olympics too, because it's a, it's something that's occurring on the world stage, and it's a great opportunity to to, to address something that needs to be addressed. So, I won't be su be surprised if it happens. I'm going to be su I, I would like to see how they're going to address it. How they're going to deal with it? Are they really going to be? You know, if 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 Naomi Osaka wears a mask. You know, something like that with with some names of some slain children. Are they going to kick her out of the Olympics? I'd be curious to see how they're going to address it. So, but I, you know, I'm not surprised that they made that statement. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for commenting. Uh, he says, uh, looks like it's coming from YouTube. Yeah, I've just checked my YouTube. I can't seem to block it there either. Um, hopefully someone from HAPS will hear and come in and help us. Um, I'm guessing you're both are simulcasting to YouTube. Yes. Multicasting is what I usually do, but yeah, this is just another example of jerks. Jerks. On but this is what, this is what, um, this is, this is what, uh, Hat, um, Hachimura was talking about, you know, that he gets these types of comments every day. So this is just illustrating what he's talking about. I'm sure he, you know, every time he turns on Twitter, there's some, clown like this on, on on Twitter saying something some nonsense about him. So yeah, can't I get away from it. I would just I just tweeted a little while ago that I don't I don't know if there's an increase in these types of I saw that people you just, on you I, I, I don't know, but it just seems like there's more. Is it more? Or it just I don't know. I think it might be more because people are more online now or people are maybe still on holidays or school holidays. Who knows? Oh, that's what it is? Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, other articles, so we talked about the Tokyo Toyo Keizai one about labels, which I thought was really good. Um, can we talk about the Stop Asian Hate article that you did? I also, I thought that was great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, there was a... Uh... 
there was an incident that happened in the States, in New York, a matter of fact, where uh, there was a video, a video was captured of a, of a black guy just walking up to an Asian woman, just kind of beat her down, pummeling her to the ground, you know, and the people just watching, not really assisting her. So it's kind of a, a black guy on New Yorkers, there's a black guy or black people. And I was concerned that um, as this, of course, um, we, we hope that this stuff, you know, ceases, comes to a cease, but in all likelihood, it's likely, you know, with some so many people like this guy spamming on in the world, there's a there's a likelihood that it, it won't come to a cease and that, you know, it will be, con, you know, additional attacks moving forward. And I'm concerned that, you know, at some point, because uh, right now I don't think Japan is especially concerned about it because it's not happening in Japan. And it's not, of course, it has happened to Japanese Americans. Um, there was one gentleman who was killed, right? But um, I don't think that Japanese people are feeling it directly, but I think at some point they might, you know, let's say a tourist or someone visiting a Japanese national is harmed, you know, then it's gonna become this thing, you know, and because of, you know, what we were saying before with this coco gene business, if it's a coco gene involved, then that's gonna, that's gonna tarnish all of us because of, you know, the, the understanding of what coco gene means, meaning that, you know, everybody, um, who who shares that that labeling is is um, likely to do something similarly, and uh, I want to make it clear that that's not the case, and that you need to um, think about that. You know, this is a person, the person who committed this atrocity. You know, this was the same. This was a, this person is clearly not dealing with a, a full deck. You know, he killed his own mother. He spent years in the penitentiary system, which doesn't really unleash sane people on the in the way out in the world after that you know amount of time in the in that system so anyway um it's uh that's what that that's what that story was about it was just kind of saying you know please yeah. just think about what you're doing before you you know before it comes to that because i'm concerned about that i remember when there was a uh, that rape that occurred in okinawa you know, a soldier had raped a, a Japanese woman there, and um, that that kind of rubbed off on all of us here. We all kind of got painted with that same brush. There was a, I remember there was a killing of a taxi driver by a black guy here in Yokohama. He was they, a taxi driver was killed, and that and that also got pinned on blackness, you know, in a way, you know. But that's how the media tends to do it, you know. And not just here, that happens in the States as well. You know, whenever a minority commits a crime, the entire freaking group is 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 um is pegged. So anyway, um that's why I put that article out there, just to make people just think about it in advance of, of that type of, of that occurrence. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but um better to be prepared. Yeah, your uh, comments actually in that article, it reminded me of, of watching Spike Lee's film, Do the Right Thing, in uh, which I think is based in Brooklyn as well, right? And uh, yeah. it's about uh, the black communities and all the shopkeepers were Asian. And a lot of people in the community felt like they weren't living there. They were just getting the money from the people. And there yeah. was that kind of antagonistic feeling, right? Oh yeah, there was a there's a long the 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 relationship, the antagonistic relationship between um, the Asian community and black community in the U.S. is is it's old. It goes long, it goes way back. But I think that um, if we actually thought about it, we have more in common than um, than we than we uh, recognize most often. So I think that we you know we need to stop and. And think about these things. And I think COVID is making it more clear that that's the case, you right. know, because whereas I think that, like I said in the article, um, when police, when acts of police brutality occurred, sometimes I saw that there were some people, Asian people who say, well, you know, I can understand why the police were, you know, turning on them like that because black people do have a tendency, you know, so they were they were siding with the police and in cases of police brutality, which doesn't improve relations at all. But then, um, you know, they saw that that goes, the, you know, that could be that type of 
Um, ugly as can be aimed at any group in the U.S., any minority group, including Asians, and they seeing that now, and they saying, "Well, shit." <laughs> Sorry, I, I cursed. <laughs> is okay. it a, nah, and um, you know, I I think you know that's a, that was awakening moment. That was a teachable moment for a lot of um, Asian Americans, and I hopefully it can be a, a teachable moment for Japanese as well. So that's why I brought it up in that article. Yeah. Um, I think you you had a quote from Martin Luther King, injustice against one group is against all groups. Um, and that's a really powerful statement and so true that, you know, what don't you often see this in around the world when you have groups which are disadvantaged and sometimes within the disadvantaged groups, you see more infighting. And people kind of turning on each other because uh, kind of like fighting for scraps. I, I visited the States in the end of 2019 and I was shocked to meet some black people, people of color, recent immigrants who were Trump supporters. And I just I couldn't understand it. Yeah. You know? And I was like, why? <laughs> why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's it's shocking. It's shocking. Now, um, last time we talked, you were actually kind of pro Trump and you said uh <laughs> if, if yeah. Trump is creating this kind of positive change and empowering people, then you're all for him staying in power longer. Do you still feel like that? Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm getting an echo. You are? Yeah. Go ahead and take your earphones out. Hopefully, maybe it's better out the speaker. Is there a delay? Speaker. Is there um, a delay? Speaker. Oh. Can you hear it too? Now there's a real echo. Can you hear it too? Yeah. Can you put the earphone back in? Yeah, I don't I don't know what's happening. This is a crazy broadcast so far. Can you hear me now? It's everything you say, I can hear you, but I'm hearing you twice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Um, do you want to, uh, you see at the bottom of the screen, you could hit the mic button and on and off, see if that recalibrates it somehow. You see there's a white tab across the bottom. Mic, just turn it off and then back on. Okay, we're, how about I stop the broadcast and we try it again? We'll try it live again. So just stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back, yeah? Okay. Okay, let's try to turn it off and go on again in a sec. 